I've got everything hidden right now so you can't see any of the actual I think the I don't know where the HUD is I think I just hit it we're probably freezing to death here yeah <laughs> we are freezing currently so I don't have anything planned for this video today I just strongly feel like I need to share um, some info about Godot and rendering server I think the rendering server API is insanely fast um, I don't really know where to start with this. I guess to backtrack, I'm making a game. It's called Bushcraft Survival. I'm going to have a Steam page soon, and I'm going to try to start marketing it and stuff like that soon. But for the developers, I just wanted to share this right away because Godot is crazy powerful. And I still hear people say that Godot is not very good at 3D and can't do this in 3D, can't do that. This, this engine is unbelievable. So um, what I've got here is just a debug view uh, a debug render view of this terrain system. Uh, it's a chunking terrain system. It's not crazy complicated. But one thing I managed to do was create these like forest tiles. Um, and the forest tiles are, they have like several levels of detail. So I think there's at least three LODs. And at LOD two, so the highest level of detail, there's actually a multi mesh that's generated for every single one of the branches. So as crazy as it sounds, um, and you can see other videos posted on my channel, you know, I'm working through developing this game, but as crazy as it is, every single branch is procedurally generated uh, in this game. Every single tree is procedurally placed. Um, all I have to do is change the seed on a few noise textures and the entire terrain, the entire map, everything looks different. Everything looks the same right now because I'm just keeping the seed the same uh, during development. I'm actually going to switch off the debug view so you can see the terrain, how it's supposed to look. But one of the things that actually made this possible was something called the rendering server. Like I want to show you how many draw calls are really happening in the scene. It's totally nuts. Um, so as you can see the chunking LOD system happening here for the trees. It will generate trees for the entire terrain. There's some rules, right? Like it won't generate it on steep slopes. So we do a little gradient calculation there. Um, it won't generate it on water. And of course, like zoomed super far out, you can actually see, you can see the pattern uh, in the noise texture that's used. But really what's making this possible, what's making this even reasonable is, is the, uh, the rendering server API. So if I go to my force tile, well, let's go to the, the lowest level. I have a tree, right? So a tree is made up of a couple different things. Um, you can actually see an early iteration of it here in, I was using a node-based system. But basically the early iteration was there's a multi mesh that has all the branches uh, and it's not populated right now. So unfortunately we can't see it, but there's a multi mesh uh, at the highest level of detail for every single branch. And then you step out one level of detail and you get a billboard. One super nice optimization I, I figured out for the billboard was that I don't need to have a unique shadow mesh for each tree. Um, like if you look at these trees, they're similar enough that the shadows that are generated, but the shadow mesh doesn't really need to be unique between, you know, a pine and a fir or whatever, right? Um, so you can save a ton on draw calls there like that. Um, but initially I did this node-based approach. And the problem with this is that you've got one of these nodes for potentially every single tree in the scene we just saw, and it's thousands of trees. And the node-based system does really kind of collapse in Godot once you go to thousands and thousands of instances. Um, so like in my past work with other game engines, proprietary game engines, there was a huge focus on instancing, especially in industry 3D simulation. Uh, and I always kind of was wondering like, how is this going to work in Godot? How am I going to, how are we going to make this happen? But like this API for the rendering server, you can use it on a separate thread, right? So you can use multi-threading. You can't use multiple threads, not typically, because at some level, your rendering server is going to be creating instances that use meshes, use materials, that use resources. And you don't want those resources to be kind of crossing over on threads. But you can throw this on a separate thread. And in fact, that's what I've done here. So, so in the forest node, so this is an actual node in my level, all the way out to the top level of the scene, forest here is a node. One of the ways I'm actually doing this is by having a, a thread that kicks up. So this thread spins up. Um, there's a couple of housekeeping things you need to do with threads to make sure they close properly and all that. But basically this is going to sit here and run and I can add whatever I want to this thread from the rendering server and it's basically fine. But if we look at the call that just creates the log, basically you set this scenario. So that comes from the like world 3D in Godot terminology. Um, which is just like the space that the world exists in. It probably contains things like a reference to the active camera. It probably contains things like what lights are in the scene uh, and so on. 
Then you set the base, which is usually a mesh, but this could also be like a multi-mesh instance. And then you just set its transform. Uh, there's other stuff you can do. You can set visibility, you can set transparency. But I guess the real interesting thing for me to learn is that like everything you see here in your node panel, uh, you know, whether it's under geometry instance 3D or if it's under the mesh instance 3D, you can do all of that from the rendering server. And it's a nodeless approach. They're not even nodes, I should mention that too. This is actually just ref counted. So it's not the, the most lightweight version of you know object in Godot, but it's pretty lightweight. It doesn't carry around all the process and other stuff that nodes typically do in Godot. Um, so you just need to make sure that a reference exists and stays active for that whole thing to be rendered. So it's a super elegant uh, pipeline, basically. If you have, in this case, so I basically just have an array of, of tree refs. So I'm just calling my tree class tree ref now. Um, we have a whole array of these tree refs. And as long as this node from the forest tile stays active, then those things will be rendered on screen. That's basically it. Um, the rest is a bunch of like housekeeping stuff. But just to jump back to the game for a second, uh, it kind of works in, in, like I said, a grid-based system. So at the lowest level of detail, I have like 50 by 50 meter tiles. Um, and there's kind of a queuing priority system where the trees that are immediately close to the player get loaded first. And then the stuff in the background gets loaded much later. Um, you can do some cool stuff like each one of the multi meshes. You can have a really tight AABB uh, bounding box around it so that you get frustum calling really good. So that, that can really help with the draw calls. But let me switch the camera and you'll see how fast it loads. Like that's basically the entire tree system just loaded in, in you know, milliseconds. Um, the crazy thing, and these are all 3D, you know, fully interactable trees. Uh, still got some tweaking to do. I think this visibility fade could be a bit further. And if you watch the shadows closely, you can actually see the, the lower level of detail uh, shadow pop in there. But that's all all good. I wanted to show like how far you can see in the background. Um, there's an insane amount of overdraw happening, right? So remember, these are all a bunch of quads, basically. Um, it's a multi-mesh for the branches up close, um, but it's quads and billboards for anything that's even slightly further away. Um, so that's an insane number of, of, you know, quad overdraw with transparency. The engine handles it really, really well. Um, it, it's not even stuttering, not even slightly. So let's take a look at our counts and I'm going to still walk around, but I'm just, we're just going to keep an eye on the draw calls here. So a thousand draw calls for my entire terrain system, right? My entire terrain system, every single one of the trees, there's thousands of trees being drawn. Um, and under, you know, 700 or so thousand primitives. Yeah. It's a bit on the heavier side, but this is a fully, you know, um, immersive procedural 3d game that in theory goes on forever right um the way uh, the chunking system works on the terrain it's noise based it will never end but yeah so i still have a few more optimizations to do basically some of the chunks that are left behind that are really high detail they're hidden visibly um, but they're still contained in memory um, and that's a tricky one to solve because a big part of this game is that the branches are actually interactable. Like each one can fall, you can chop it down, you can, you know, harvest that log, you can build a shelter with it, make a fire with the wood. That's like the whole point of the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, in theory, this, this terrain goes on forever, which is really cool. Uh, it uses a bunch of different noise textures that it's sampling at different frequencies. So even though the noise textures aren't too crazy because it's sampling them at different frequencies. Maybe, you know, one frequency is 25 meters and another one is 40 meters. You actually have to take like the lowest common denominator of those two frequencies. And it ends up being like an insane, there's like an insane repeat distance um, on the terrain itself. So yeah, I just thought I would share this. I know this is a slightly uh, manic rant here. Uh, let's bump this up to 12. We're flying through the world now, and it loads so fast that this tree system is actually loading in, in real time. Totally nuts. Totally insane to me. Um, I still haven't done a video even on the terrain system yet. Um, it was I needed a custom terrain system because the, the mesh is highly deformable, basically. Um, there's an extremely high level of tessellation direct, like directly below our, our feet right now, basically. But I want to get up to a kind of a mountaintop just to show you what this looks like. Yes. Is there an insane amount of overdraw? Absolutely. Um, but this type of scene, 
I just don't know how you would do this with imposters. But, you know, you come out over this crest, this hill here, and you see all this detail. Every single one of those trees is a tree that's placed in world space that as you get closer to it, it's an interactable thing, um, which is crazy. It's so crazy to me. Um, will this be able to run on everything? I don't know. Right now it's running on my laptop, which is just a 3050 Ti laptop, which is, you know, it's not like a real 3050. It's not super, super powerful. Um, it's not pushing it too hard. Uh, and of course I might have sliders to, to tone these things back, of course, because it is a chunking system and I do see I, I'm having some weird visibility things here, but it is a chunking system. So it is pretty easy to actually tune back, um, without too much difficulty. You can bring this into the world, right? So we get snowfall. It's, it uses, um, the depth texture. So it will actually snow will fall behind things. I do want to work on some, like, um, some vertex shading stuff to get or fragment shader stuff to get some snow on the trees. That's probably going to be a bit, a little bit hard. It's up the master speed, right? So it's a little bit more snowy now. I do want to get some more like swirls and stuff in here. Um, but I'm super happy with this right now. The other thing is thanks to the people who made sky 3d shout out to Togi San's games. I think that's what they're called. Togi San games. Um, yeah, we can change the cloud cover here too. Somewhere in here. Let's see sky dome cloud coverage, right? So if it's a really snowy, ooh, kind of getting some red, a red hue on the horizon there. But yeah, it's really shaping up. And I think um, I'm more than happy with like all the technology that, that Godot is offering. It's just, it's just wild to me. And people still say, oh, Godot can't do 3D. I, I call, I call total BS on that. Um, I think this, this engine, as long as you know how to use the different mechanisms, like if you know when to use the node system, maybe when not to use the node system, they literally have a tutorial on it. And so, you know, that's where I got the idea to use ref counted for my, uh, objects that are basically using the rendering server API. But I mean, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this one. I do have some basic mechanics in the game, so I'm excited about that. Um, you can build shelters, you can build fires. I've got everything hidden right now, so you can't see any of the actual, I think the, I don't know where the HUD is. I think I just hit it. We're probably freezing to death here. Yeah, <laughs> we are freezing currently. Yeah, the game mechanics are coming along. I do want this to be like a survival game. I am thinking it's going to be like a roguelite uh, type game where maybe a roguelite with like a, a um, persistent skill tree um, might be really cool. So you can use different, uh, you know, different techniques, different tools, and different methods as, as you learn it. Anyways, um, just stay in touch with the project. Let me know what you think. Uh, I know a lot of developers watch my channel, but if you happen to be a gamer and you're watching this, uh, let me know if you kind of think this game would be cool. Um, it is, you know, heavily based on shows like Alone. There's a YouTube channel called um, Outdoor Boys. But I really want to try to recreate that experience of, you know, being alone in the wilderness and, and just fighting to survive. I'm planning on having things like fishing and trapping. I don't know about hunting. That might be that might be too much. I'm trying to pull this game off in maybe eight or nine months. But anyways, that's it for this one. So uh, I will catch you all next time.